talk a little more? Uh, yeah, of course. Hi, I'm Will. I'm here to help with stuff. Something about your mic sounds wrong, like Discord is eating 30% of you. Hmm, should I leave and come back? Wait, talk more. It might have just fixed itself. Oh, maybe it's gotten better? Yeah, the, uh... now it's it's fine. It, it huh. kind of sounded like that thing it does at like the start of someone entering a call for like 20 seconds, but it had been well huh. over 20 seconds, which is unusual. You know, that happened Second, yesterday well. uh, before the Nintendo event where uh, I joined, or no, Yam joined, and I was sounding weird to her. So, hope that's not a new fun thing. Bum, 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 bum. Chorney Chronicles. Oops, I spelled it Chornicles. <laughs> That's like a thing that like a Yiddish grandpa would call your nutsack. <laughs> right in my Chornicles. If he's a pirate. <laughs> That's how he talks. My, I did just watch an extra history special on uh, Jewish pirates in diaspora, so it's not impossible. Oh, that's cool. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Huh. Um... It was an alright special. I, I was like, I ignored most of it for some reason. Not on purpose. <laughs> just, I, I, were, I listen to that stuff while I'm doing storyboards. Yeah. Um, yeah, I get you. It's just funny to be like, oh, I watched this thing on, uh, it was very interesting. Oh, cool. What'd you learn? Oh, I, I didn't say it was very interesting. <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> it was fine. Um, I have, I have a problem focusing on stuff like that. Uh, if, Extra history is usually very good at finding a story within a history and making central characters out of its narratives. Uh, and episodically, this one jumped around to a different pirate each time. So uh, it was a little harder for me to, like, stay invested. Hmm. Fair enough. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Ooh. I, so, uh, I hope up my phone to like check on my work email to make sure I haven't missed anything and uh, sometimes my phone is just like here are some top news stories that might interest you so it's normally like Dungeons and Dragons video games and things like that or things that are local and the one thing just like uh, what is the label of this thing schools respond to devious licks social media challenge catching on in Minnesota and I was like what does that mean devious licks I don't like the sound of that and then also the images of a bathroom and I was like oh Fuck, what yeah, is this about? It'd be guitar, right? No, apparently it's just people fucking up bathrooms. Nice like you're just like removing soap dispensers and like don't do throwing that. all the toilet paper in. Yeah, it's just dumb shit. I was like, oh. Well come on, what the fuck? Alright. Um Devious licks plus bathroom. I thought it was like a see yeah. how many times you can lick a toilet seat in a row. Yeah, yeah, that's what in I thought it row. was. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, if, in you, a row, if you stop you for more than five seconds, it doesn't count. It needs to be unbroken lickage. All right. Um, Civ will show up soon. So, uh, exactly. So, last time on this, we finished case three. Um, and in which we got off, we got our defendant acquitted but like in a way where we're pretty sure at the very least he's suspicious if not guilty. Uh, we walked away for 10 seconds and he got himself burned in a carriage, um, which Van Zeke's totally had nothing, to uh, had nothing to do with. Um, so why is everyone so quiet? Ah, that would be why. There we go. All right, all of you talk again. I need to readjust sound settings. Yeah. That was Aram and Siv, but I'm gonna give a real voice test for Jello because I care. Thank you. Will. I um, am here. I have my mic set up in the usual way, where it's probably quiet. So let me know. Welcome to Road NT1A. Um. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, and then unrelated to that, the Chief Justice was like, why don't you do the filler case instead? And we were like, okay. And we <laughs> met uh, the Lestrade analog, whose name is not Lestrade for some reason. Uh, and he was like... Lestrade? No, Lestrade is a completely separate character who is a, a female pickpocket urchin, which is a very interesting choice. Uh, and then... He was like, all right, go talk to your person. And we went in and it's apparently a famous Japanese author who I have never heard of, but I will continue to play him despite the fact that Aram is here now because I don't get to play anyone fun in this playthrough and this guy's a Golden Kamui character. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna move this thing. Did we get, was there like an opening movie to this case that showed someone getting no. got or? No. Okay. Uh, Sosuke. One sec, I'm typing up an ad. This is, it's not Sosuke. Soseki? Is that how it had said? Soseki. Uh, yeah, Soseki. Soseki Natsume-san. What an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I'm a poet, you see, a writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume. Uh, you mean an alias? You know too much. Uh, that's, that's correct. I can't see. It's very small in the corner. No, no, no. Don't be so prosaic. It's much more refined than that. And haiku. That really reminds me of home. Oh, this guy's Japanese, by the way. And we're not sure why he's in here. Why do you say that you were... Uh, it's written in orange. It's very hard for me to see. Visiting this, a visiting student said, oh, I seem to have grown uh, terrible eyesight in the last 15 seconds. Okay. Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery, and now this! It's beyond the pale! Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No! I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh. But just because the government tells you to do something, does it mean you can do it? No. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> if they're, just really, really having difficulty with this ad. <laughs> if they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable! I see. Hmm. Only the other day I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words on whitewashy! <laughs> hmm. You must be a man of great standing. Oh, yes! So I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. Love his weird eyes. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Soseki-san? I didn't do it! I didn't commit that atrocious murder! What? Oh, uh, no, 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 it's all right. The woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife right before my eyes! Before your... That's weird that she moved. Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker? Um, I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up in here? Uh, some people oh. are saying Stiv is still very quiet. Yes, I've turned myself up quite a bit, so hopefully that helps. Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse! The curse of London! It's incredibly, inexcusably, irritatingly inconvenient! <laughs> yeah, you found me! <laughs> so Soseki-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find out more about this case. No, yes, I think we've got sorry. enough. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Good luck. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and, with, and heavy with fog. I had been to the bookshop to buy some books and was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. Surely the bookshop wasn't accursed too. 
It's weird. Why even say anything? As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green yeah. overcoat, she was. And just as I went to overtake her... She's a round woman. Oh, goodness. Her head is an onion. She's, she's a melon. She suddenly not let bleeding, out, though. She suddenly let out a little stream and collapsed into the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. <laughs> There's That's this, so terrible. There's this type of Japanese idiomatic compound where you have four kanji in a row called... Uh, Yojikugo. Yoji, uh, Yoji, Yoji Jukugo. Yeah, Yoji Jukugo. Which is, uh, which, which got is trans. Got trans I, I was already reading. It. <laughs> uh, which is what got translated into his four-word alliterations in English. Okay, that's a fair. <laughs> just, I just went back and looked at him. Is this how you hold a baby? Oh no! <laughs> and I saw that she wasn't dead yet, so I just figured I'd. Uh, <laughs> I called out to the woman, but she didn't move. It was like a ghostly ghoulish cream graveyard. <laughs> Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. <laughs> That's not good. They'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Susaki-san, was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English? And a young woman at that. I'm diffident, shy, timid, unsure. I can't <laughs> talk to people! I... I see. A young woman un unknown to Soseki-san. And at the time it happened, who else did you see nearby? D did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one. Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else on the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What conundrum? The conundrum? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, Suzato-san? What's the conundrum? Well... If what Sasaki-san has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim and that there was no one else at the scene. Then, he apparently fled without having been seen. I did! I did! But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit. Now I think she's saying, then, who the fuck saw him? Who reported him? Uh, you! What did you just say? Nothing! I, I didn't say it! Oh, please let go of me! <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I thought that a little loudly. <laughs> yeah, because you said it. Yes. Actually, it, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Sosaki-san actually come to be arrested? Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh, yes, she's right. It... It was him. That accursed great detective! He led the police to me! Of all the Whoa. bad luck! A cursed great detective? Could it be? I shall never forget that nam that Nam's mane as long as I live! With his hot head laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness! Brush, big-headed busybody! Be gone! May you be cursed until the end of your days! Hairlock Shones! I knew it. <laughs> Mr. Jones? Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me! This is a police! Put the weapon down! Yes, it was thin silver, and yes, it was hard, but I wasn't eating a weapon! Disgusting dietary discrimination, devils! <laughs> <laughs> this That's man. my favorite JoJo part. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was, in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat! That Herlock Jones! It's actually just Herlock Jones. He's English. 
since I oh since I found uh, 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 since I uh, 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 drop a beat since I found that he's a famous name and detection here in what you whatever. <laughs> yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts apparently. He thinks I'm the knife wielding madman. Me, this weak, stupid kitten of a man. I wonder what great deduction process led him to his conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Sholmes's deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. <laughs> well, um, the thing is, I was, I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were, that's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing question after question at me in impossible English, fiendish foreign flim, flim flammery! <laughs> Well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But my mind went blank. I, I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, yes, I do, and I'm fine. <laughs> the next thing I knew, I was in manacles. And before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh, dear. I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. I'm fine. He's not fine now. <laughs> Good <Thanks>. one. <laughs> mm. well, Mr. Naruhodo, Esquire. Oh, you can just call me Naruhodo. And when we're speaking English, a simple Mr. is more than enough. Oh, yes. Um, all, all right, yes. Uh, they've really got to... Uh, they've really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. <laughs> but please... I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, um, do you think his eyes are supposed to look like a cat's eyes? Yeah, yeah. he's a cat man. He's a cat boy. <laughs> oh God, I'm hair parts. Why? <laughs> Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself on a study tour. A, a student? I have defended a case in the Old Bailey, only the one though, but at this moment in time I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, not a hood or son. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm sort of a locum? I don't know this word. Locum lawyer, I suppose. But, but that armband! That's the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire! It's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. A keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh? Uh, what do you mean? Who do you mean? The lawyers. All the British defense lawyers. They won't defend me. Goodness. What? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before. When it happened, there was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Saseki-san. In any way, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Somebody not, someone not to be trusted. I've heard them openly laughing about me before, in my earshot without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said, and of course the foreigner dig it. They even had the gall to say the man doesn't understand half what's being said anyway. That's awful. They're wrong. I've studied more English than half the policemen out there on the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. They all hated me. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. So, Seki-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. If we can find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you. 
Welcome, student Mr. Naruto Esquire! We should be going then, Naruto san. We have a case to prepare for. This guy's great. What a yeah. silly man. Yeah, I like the defendants in this game. Real quick, I'm gonna go get my tea. Alright. Hoping we'll run into homes. Ooh. Love the wonky tonk buildings. Yeah. Hello. Oh, hey, hello. <laughs> so this is what had happened. Briar Road. You want to take over for now, Will? Oh, not a hard son. <laughs> okay. Close enough. No, no, you caught that, me off guard. I was looking at my phone. I was like, I got to say words. <laughs> that snowman's like, hey, not a <laughs> Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of the Scotland Art Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know. But Mr. Narahodo, to see one with my own eyes. They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd ever come this close. To a real Bobby's helmet. What? The helmet? <laughs> of course. I have to try one on one day. Well, I oh, hope your patty dream comes true. Hello. Oh, goodness. oh, hello. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson. This guy makes me hungry. This is yeah. on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Very loud dogs above me, I'm sorry. Yes, of course, we're here to investigate. So, you've been to the Holden's house then. What do you th make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Great. I <laughs> get another one of these guys, do I? Well, do what you will. Doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh, the stone-cold hour of rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone-cold air. That makes it worse, somehow. Hello. 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 What obvious. There may be snowmen. <laughs> what a delightful snowman. I didn't realise the English had a tradition of making snowman as well. Looks a little creepy, though. Oh, it has a scarf. Look. You'd need one if you were out in this freezing cold all the time. Wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know. You're right. Anyway, even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. All right. I just wanted to look at the so snowman. It does seem like Suzato can just read his mind. So apparently Chad said that the thing is that all of his, like, internal dialogue, he doesn't actually think it. He just mumbles it to himself, and she's always listening to him. Oh, okay. I think that he makes sense. It under his breath. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know, I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does Let me make just the... steal it off this gent. <laughs> it does make them look the part. Seeing that policeman there with his helmet on, you certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh, yes. Doesn't he look wonderful? Being the London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? Oh, wow. He wakes people up? Yup. Wraps on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. Ow. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. 
Let me see. 20 miles. That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That That's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my! And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well. And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly, more alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. It's almost like it's flawed. Not always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Narahodo. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're here for a reason, I forgot. <laughs> it happened at around five in the evening, two days ago. Just there, on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes round pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area. I happen to have on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's your policy to give lawyers defending suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So, who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsune is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone, doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. There was somebody hiding behind this snowman, of course. <laughs> Don't make jokes. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be. How? I don't know. Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It, what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. It's, oh it's those two beheaded gentlemen. <gasps> My goodness! It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? All right. <laughs> Let's get it over with. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of the London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Oh, that's no good! A, a policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there? Oh, he did it. His wife fucking did it because she was jealous of her hat or something. And his someone <laughs> covered it someone up. in it's chat. Easy. Those are the Jello characters I mentioned last time, by the way. Exciting. Oh boy. Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a Bobby. Catching them banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it's something? <laughs> Do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like in court tomorrow. Oh, what the fuck, game? Have a consistent double tap, right? I've, oh, sorry. I've no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that, then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. The policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make your job very difficult indeed. <laughs> yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could I could have warned me of that too. <laughs> oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. You what? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? The colours drained. The colour has drained from his cheeks. <laughs> Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Notsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes's inspirational Greek deductions. Fiddle faddle! Uh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> the man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. 
Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case! Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He... he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gabble, gabble! <laughs> <laughs> Just stabbing her with the chips. Ever seen this before, Chips? Oh, yes, that's Ranst Magazine. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Jones appears! Okay. But yes, well. Holster it for a minute, <laughs> Suzato. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called great detective makes a mockery of us all! If you make... If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in uh, any Herlock Sholmes tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be frumped by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's a danger as dangerous to us as Scotland Yard is. He is to all our criminals. Yes, there we go. <laughs> that can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly, the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, uh, um... Hmm. Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer worth his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Uh, because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? There's no way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only people he usually bars us with are the real scum, the master criminals, the violent ones. M master criminals? The violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims, only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Notsume wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to go sink his teeth into, for what of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it. Some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? Inside of that Castlevania Lord of Darkness? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it. Ooh. Maybe. Well... I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Narahodo, can I make a suggestion? Let's go home. Oh, yes, Let's what is home. it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly! <laughs> Those shining eyes, you can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Notsume did blame Mr. Sholmes for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did! He really did! <laughs> Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you just going to ignore that? I hope not! She's repeatedly going on and off her tippy toes. <laughs> She's very excited. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. The trouble is, we have no idea of the man's address, or... It's Baker Street! How do you know that? It's in the stories, of course! <laughs> 221 B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world! Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. Uh, we better try to find our way there before Suzato's son gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I'll summon a carriage! She's so fucking cute. So we're to have a reunion already with the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Hello. <laughs> yes, yes. How do you do? Oh, 
That's a Scotland Yard carriage. You know, for some reason, I'm su I'm surprised they have Scotland Yard carriages. I don't know why. I wouldn't have expected that. The cop car is an old invention. <laughs> they use vehicles like to rush to crime scenes and cart away criminals. S sorry, I was drinking cider. Did you call it old dimension? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Honestly, like that went in and out of my mouth so quickly. Here we are in old dimension. You mean the past? I do I not. Old invention, I ah, said. Ah, okay. You're very well informed, aren't you? Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> it's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows then. <laughs> oh, like this? But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it, wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way, help me find a good stone! No, 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 I wasn't serious! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking goon. That's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps you're being a little too overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught. Uh, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs, despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. It's. I'm sure it's that wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone to. It does you no <sighs> favors at all. Uh, that probably means we shouldn't really bother investigating until Shelms comes. So, uh... The bike! The fucking bike tire! <laughs> oh, pinch me! I must be dreaming! My goodness! Toot 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 That'll be a million dollars! Where are you going? No, come back! Is that fucking Opal Pokemon over there on the left? Thank you very oh. much. <laughs> it's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. Love it. Loves it. Lives for it. Dies for it. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Shows. Eviction, Otis. <laughs> Pay your fucking rent, Herlock. How are you getting those plants to grow in London winter? Alchemy! <laughs> oh my god. Damn, bitch, you live like this? So this is where the, the great... Wicked... He killed half the wicked witch of the East. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. Oh, is the maid gonna be here? Is it as described in the stories, Miss Suzato? Um, Suzato-san? Many famous cases have been solved here, in this very room. Oh, I suppose they must have been, yes. I never really read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it, the romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Narodo? Oh, I, I suppose I can, yes. <laughs> so, if you don't mind... Spin me around. I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, don't mind me. <sighs> She's obsessed. I really like Susano. She's Dream really good. good. Well, it looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me? Is anybody home? Where's is, Miss Hudson? Is anybody homes? Oh, do we have a visitor? <laughs> Hello. Oh, do we have a visitor? Hello! Is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Uh, hello. Wait. Aren't you... Piff is now Piff? playing Loop Hero. <laughs> hello, Piff. Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. Someone in chat, it's Jailbait. Fucking gross. Nothing about her is sexualized, you weirdo. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. I'm sure it's the same go- Yeah, you would- Who else would look like that? Miss Suzato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? Do you think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case? The, 
The king of Bavaria? King Wilhelm Gottfried Sigmund von Ornstein, of course. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Holmes for a moment and look over there. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> Tea's brewed and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Ah, it's you! I knew she says. I knew it. Suzato-san recognizes her too. Uh, yeah, we remember. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilded's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Or you having to get straight to work when you've um, just arrived in London. Oh, yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. It's kerosene. Oh, um, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? Hmm. Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh. Oh, I'm due to defend a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Uh. Uh, did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley! <laughs> Hurley. Hurley? Mr. Sholmes to you, sir, surely. Mr. Sholmes was oh goodness, I've spilled tea on myself while I was trying to talk. <laughs> oh, silly me. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Someone in chat, oh cool, she's the brain cell here. <laughs> it's true, yes, she is. Was well, he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? I'm the two brain cells. <laughs> and perhaps more to the point, uh, why is she here in Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me, I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. I live here together with Hurley. She has such a good clownish theme. It's do 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 do. Oh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? what? Uh, what's the matter? No, wait, this, this can't be. Did, did, you, did you say that your name is Wilson? What's the matter with Suzato-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, um, I'm Ryonosuke Narahodo, a lawyer from Japan. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Hon Narahodo's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. I said it right this time. Lovely. <laughs> Susie and Vina, got it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Su 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 uh, Susie. And Runo. There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey? Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful, thank you so much. Oh, no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though at the time we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. You mean this? Ah, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh yes, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Jeannie? Yes, she's professional pickpocket. Is so, it Ginny or Jeannie? Ginny, oh, I think. So we found it out. Very... It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you refer referring to that trial-disrupting gun-like contraption? Exactly. So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm, perhaps I should think about a fitting... Uh, about fitting a self-destruct mechanism to my inventions. This girl is dangerous. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that. So she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock. 
Herlock Sholmes. We live here, together. I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? <laughs> I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Uh, well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Hull? Mr. Sh <laughs> oh, I'm his father! <laughs> Alchemy is a wonderful thing! <laughs> well, I expect you've found out that lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. Just, I'm his father! Alchemy is a wonderful thing! Do you really think any normal, non-homunculus human would act the way he does? <laughs> <laughs> he explains a lot if you think about it that way. So, the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. I'm your... ten, I have to pay rent. <laughs> your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but uh, how old are you? <laughs> ten at last this year. Save your voice for her is literally perfect. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, I've been waiting years. I know, literally <laughs> years to voice this character. Well, what of your mother and father? And I was excited to voice Shelms at your side until Aram came in and did it perfectly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no, they're not around. Oh, I see. Wonder what the story is there. Oh, yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes and... Oh! You have a copy of Rand's magazine? Yes! I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Hurley's always solving such amazing cases, you see, and he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? Goodness! Last night he was telling me all about the new case he just stole, solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the author? Yes! I'll let you in on a secret if you'd like. I'm going to call this latest adventure The Speckled Band. Um... It'll, it'll make people very mad. Could I perhaps <laughs> suggest you don't write that one, actually? No, whatever for. I did change some of the details, so I've included more slurs. Mm. The speckled band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the notion of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, Bad that decision. That was Mr. Sholmes something or other. Yes, and of course I know that a snake might not be credible fit for the sack, facts of the case exactly, but it's a story. Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think, don't you? So, do you mean to say, are there stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in the Rance magazine? All written by me, yes. On my wonderful and very modern typewriter. But all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, do by Dr. John H. Wilson. My first name is John. Susanna hmm. son's getting more and more worked up. Ah, uh, yes, that's me. Jello, what the fuck is your reading speed? Uh, instant, but the reason I always click forward early is because there's about a three second delay on the Discord end, so Siv and Will and Aram need to see their line of dialogue. If I don't do it in advance, there's a Kingdom Heartsian pause between each line, and I hate that. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But, but what about the Doctor of Medicine part? Oh, that's old Choo Choo. I am a doctor of medicine. No! At ten years old! My mud pies will cure any ails! At ten <laughs> years old! My full name, Iris Doogie Hauser Wilson. Well, God. that's quite incredible. But, what? But, but, Doogie Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh! Well, it sounds...
sounds a little strange, doesn't it? Oh, sorry. A great detective, a great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow. I, I suppose it does. Yes. Poor Susato-san. My world is falling apart, Naruto san Hold me. <laughs> she looks like her whole world has just fallen apart. Hold me. Susato slams him. <laughs> Naruto, hold me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, about, <laughs> about before. Yes, yes. What's on your mind, Rino? Do you tell me. Runorata. Runorata. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have difficult a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all of that? Oh, uh. Sorry, that's what you mean. Oh, oh that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Oh, do you have a deduction? Ooh, ooh. ooh. Oh my god. Uh, Miss Wilson is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. Oh my god. Just a little magical girl gun. First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Bruno. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the Defendant's Antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So, I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that... <laughs> you accepted a case against the particular pros that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. Blah. The Reaper of the <laughs> Bailey. I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you? Earlier, t earlier today. Ah. Oh. They use those stamps to keep close eye on comings and goings, you see. I didn't realize. And the red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded, the two of you had already had case to visit a cause to visit, go to the jail, see the man. <laughs> <laughs> My <However>. final message. <laughs> Save the world. However, neither of you was wearing particularly sad expression on your face, so I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. Oh shit, god damn it. But how so, could like, you something something? You, you can see how like it, it blips in, like only, like each phrase has like dip, 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 and sometimes yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. do an entire Chunks. line in one frame, and other times it it's like doing it st uh, separately, and I never know when it's gonna do that. Mm -hmm. But how could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours for, oh, he only just showed up and then he ran away. Only solved yet another case. It obviously amused him. He told me that he'd caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been. I hope he shows up and we didn't ask Aram to be here for no reason. <laughs> Mr. Nostomay! Seen here standing on top of a running washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> now Runo has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a King Mono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley Cook. And there was only one conclusion to those facts. That the, the oh, this voice is actually taking you, a lot out of me, surprisingly. You, you don't have to read that fast. I'm always gonna advance forward at the same speed, depending on when you hit a certain word in the box. I see. Thank you. You both came here okay, to <laughs> ask Curly about the case. My bow is made out of elevated cheese. Sometimes I have it as a little snack. Well, I'm feeling peckish. <laughs> There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will begin tomorrow. Hurley is always stabbing his notes with a knife, you know. He is silly. <laughs> um, I thought it was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. So she's clearly too smart to ever be involved in any serious capacity in a case. <laughs> Unless she's a bad guy. 
Man, <gasps> what an amazing move that would be. That'd be fucking great. Well, was it your winner? Were my deductions correct? They, they were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You even managed the certain something. What? You even managed the certain something of Mr. Sholmes's delivery. Oh well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. Y you will, won't you, Iris? Please. Doctor Bowes, Sid would like to talk more. <laughs> So yesterday, Mr. Sholmes apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying? Yes. Curly had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage, but the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man. Miss... Um, oh, that, you. oh, yeah, you got me. I started uh, it by accident. Uh, Mr. Natsume, beyond any doubt, Soseki-san said he didn't see... Oh, God. Soseki-san said he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. Is that a speckled man? Soseki-san said see! But it seems there were witnesses after all. Hurley used his great deductive powers to determine the man's address. So in the chat, in before her last name is fake and the real one is Shmoriardi. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police and what did they find? A short, shifty looking, stooped man shivering in fear. Uh, Mr. Sholmes' great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. He's a great detective! Still, that means the incident only occurred two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Haley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear, I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and Wow, big excuse, boys. Great. Staff <laughs> and money are both short. Crimes are usually picked on the first suspicious person. And via means of a bullet. That's horrible. I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. <laughs> I, I suppose it is. But in that case, I don't hold out much hope for Soseki-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. <laughs> Hurley doesn't let me talk to people. No! <laughs> Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, oh, well, I expect Hurley's still investigating the scene. Oh my god, he was the snowman. God, I hope so. Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. N Natsume? Early uh, said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson while you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, oh, goody. In that case... Give Greg say this for me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. It's a business card and a quarter. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Huh? It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Signed, Moriarty. <laughs> Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Oh, you're shilling? You're shilling and farthing? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Good luck, then. I'm going to return to my writing and... It's for ban time. And I'll be making more special blends of tea, so come back again soon. 
We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. You're great. So goodbye. <laughs> well, Mr. Nodahodo, it's back to the scene of the crime. Okay. Hooray! Here we go. Are they just going to teleport me? That's nice of them. Let me just go get my spare bottle of water from my booth because I did not expect Let me go get my left. spare bottom. That's also what I thought I was going to say. Just, just unscrew this one and... One cheek, that, one cheek, two that cheek. That voice took the ass clean off me. Huh? <laughs> like Maze Myers now. <laughs> It looks as though the police are still here, carrying on with their investigation. Perfect. So let's find Inspector Gregson as quickly as possible. Yes. And let's see if he'll take a break from his chips to look at that silver tip Iris gave us for him. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. <coughs> uh, okay. Do I... Oh, yeah. You'll have to present it to me. I, I don't Ooh. know why, but... I assume this is just what it says. Yeah. Yep, okay. Okay. What's the last line? The only, the only repeated person to tell I, the gentleman. In the I back cannot flip know. this very Hang easily. On. I'm literally craning my I neck. Trust that won't be I a trust problem. that won't be a problem. Quest. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, fuck. Um, Inspector Gregson. Do you have a moment? I'm sorry to say I don't. I'm a very busy man. Much too busy to talk to a pair of foreign gadabouts, that's it for sure. I love that word. We have these for you. A present from Miss Cyrus Wilson. What? From me? From her ladyship? Her ladyship? <laughs> give that here at once! Come on, hand it over, that's for me! Uh, uh, don't wait for me to give it, uh, don't wait for me to give it to you, will you? Jesus Christ! Um, what was that coin, exactly? It's a silver crown, obviously, but it's a lot more than that. It's, well, it's an appearance fee. That's what it is. An appearance fee? Oh, I see, you mean... So if you might want to, like, tilt, either move the mic a little bit away from your lips or tilt your head, you, you, you pop consonants so hard directly into it. There's okay. Like... That's right, for the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Her ladyship always offers me a little financial reward for featuring me, every time. Oh, and you wonder why, yo, oh, you stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I know all about your exploits, Inspector. I read them avidly. Of course, her using my name without my say-so does make me the butt of a lot of unpleasant jokes, but still. I am sorry, Inspector. That must be difficult for you. Okay. Never you mind that. So, what do you want to know then, eh? Sorry? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust there won't be a problem, it says. Well, obviously, it's not a problem. Go on, fire away. What do you want to know? My God, sir. Uh, uh, well, something, something, something. We'd very much like to know the address of Mr. Natsume's lodgings. Ah, the little knife wielding mustache Japanese fellow. He lives in a right old hovel. It's just over there, look. Oh. On the first floor of that house on the corner where that rack of the bicycles propped up. Oh, his windows are all bricked up. That is nearby indeed. If I remember rightly, the landlord is a Mr. John Gerardeb. Right, well, if you see her again, you make sure to give her ladyship my regards, you hear? I mean it! You tell her that Gregson sends his best wishes! Don't worry, Inspector, we will. Goodbye for now, then. And long live her ladyship. Is she just the Queen? No. No. Well, at least he told us what we wanted to know before he left. Yes. So then, shall we go and see what we can find in Mr. Notsume's lodgings? Definitely. That's a rather typical old brick bit. Okay, fine. I, it's, it's not gonna move us, so I don't care. <laughs> Jack, 
Jello doesn't want to learn about London. I don't, <sighs> honestly. <laughs> um, cannon? That's my toilet. Cannon. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Aram. Aram's about to oh. be her lock. Oh. Will. <laughs> yeah. May I help you? <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, yes, would this be the residence of Mr. John Garadeb? Indeed it would, sir. And who may I say is calling? My name is Ryanosuke Narahodo. I... I uh, um... Mr. Narahodo is representing Mr. Soseki Natsume. I believe he takes lodgings here. This room has the exact same color scheme as the book Goodnight Moon. Huh. Oh! We would very much like to ask him some questions about our client. Oh! <laughs> One moment, please. I shall convey the message to Mr. Garadab. What is that thing on the ground? Is that a bone? Did you see that, Miss Susato? That was a real-life English maid! I know! As I understand it, anyone of standing in English society employs a number of household staff. But that was the first time I've ever seen one in the flesh. Oh, this day keeps on getting better! It certainly feels like we've really arrived now, doesn't it? We only need to meet a butler and the experience will be complete. Well, I'm not sure I'd go that far, but I understand the sentiment. Thank you for waiting. Mr. Garadab will see you now. This way. Oh. Oh. Good night, Moon! <laughs> <laughs> My, I think so far, my only there? complaint of this game is a couple little things about its UI UX. Oh, there's sun and moon. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh boy, who's who's gonna be this guy? This can be you for now, Aram. Okay. Hmm. Boys don't want to give this guy. Uh, good day to you. Oh, I'm John Garadale, that's yours. Yes. Hang on, I gotta turn you way the fuck up. I am uh, talking a little more directly into it. <laughs> I'm a proper English gentleman. <laughs> it's an interesting choice for the voice. Uh, someone says this he's a military man. Mm. This is Ryunosuke Naruhodo. He's a defense lawyer. Military <laughs> man, eh? Do excuse me, not getting up. Took a shot to the knee a few years back in the Battle of Maiwan, don't you know? Earned a medal for my pains, but had to withdraw from service. Handed over the reins to the up and comings. So he's a retired soldier. It's a hell of a job getting up and down stairs now, I can tell you. Don't get out much as you can imagine. So this guy's the murderer for sure. Uh, so I might want to veto this voice Good in voice. the long run. <laughs> It's a little too much of this. Okay. Yeah, still military man. Uh, it's a hell of a job getting up and down stairs now. I can never... oh, yes, it's quite a climb up here to the second floor, isn't it? I was panting at the top of the stairs. Something about him just made me want to voice him as Dr. Garcia. Oh, is that what that was? <laughs> Not, I mean, yeah. <laughs> about a month. <laughs> Exercise, Mr. Narodo. <laughs> Do you think so? Well, Mr. Garadib, no doubt you were very courageous to earn yourself a medal. Mm, no, it was nothing. A medal was just a fold roll, really. Wouldn't like to offend the general, though, so I grudgingly displayed it on the wall. Why don't you fetch it down, Joan? Let these good people see it properly. Joan! Fetch the whole fuck up! Jesus, Jesus Christ! No. Dash it, old woman! Be careful! Oh, dearie me! I do beg your pardon, sir. Hmm. You jolly near took the skin off my hands! I shall be more careful, sir. She's been trying to kill him for years. Oh, so, anyway, there you have it. Living the quiet life now. Ever since I tried to shoot his knee out in Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> been following him. Yes, I see. I hear you want to know about the chap lodging downstairs, is that right? Yes, we would be very grateful if you could answer some questions for us. 
Only to please naturally, especially if it helps to keep the peace here in Blighty. Aww. Aww. We forged an alliance with the Empire of Japan recently, as I'm sure you're aware. So this case is very much in the public eye, as it were. Oh. Two people at once. Maid, burn his peepee! Oh, <laughs> is it? Even have some famous detective poking around, you know. In this old house, would you believe? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Hmm, could have been, didn't catch the chap's name. Not really my cup of tea on that detective business. Oh, but do you have a copy of France Magazine here, so... Uh, 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 no, um... <laughs> Did he spread it all up just so that he could get to see her log? Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, the chap's investigating the foreigner's room as we speak. So he's in soseki sons room. Bally nuisance is what it is. The whole neighborhood's twitching its curtains now. Mm, I don't like all this fuss. It's jolly unsettling. Twitching its curtains is a really funny phrase. Mm hmm I... Man, am I... Am I crazy? Like... It's such a long shot, but I really feel like the good night moon thing might be intentional. <laughs> You'd have to show me the cover, and then I might. Oh, I'm gonna you. grab it. Okay. I Depends how old that book is, really. It's pretty old and pretty. F I mean, it's somewhat famous. Yeah, no, okay. I good I am night, not crazy. Man. This is super the same uh, same color scheme here. This is what it looks like. Huh. Yeah. I yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um. No. Ah, yes. The Japanese chap. Only been lodging here for a week. Oh, just one week. So he moved in very recently then. I have oh. two now. Sorry, I was clicking off the. Stop, man! I was clicking off the tab, and if you click off of the game, it clicks forward once. Yeah. Oh. I have two lodgers most of the time, one on the ground floor and one just below us. The first floor room became available a week ago, you see. They'd been all... Oh, ah, dash it all, Joan, do be careful. Oh, my goodness, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'm a puffer fish. Oh, if you want to know my opinion... <laughs> oh. I, I thought he was a shady sort from the moment I set eyes on him. That's why I've been keeping two softballs in my cheeks as weapons for when I need to confront him. Oh, why? Because they're easy to throw and they hurt. Oh, <laughs> he I seemed see. to have he seemed to have a most nervous disposition, always shaking and looking over his shoulder. The man had shady written across his sweat soaked brow, if you ask me. Also to myself, Joan, that man is trouble. Sooner or later he's going to do something untoward. I really like this voice of yours, Will, actually. <laughs> oh, God fucking damn it, man. And I'm rarely wrong about anything. We won't be calling this maid as a witness, that's for sure. Was there anything else that struck you as suspicious about the man at all? Whoa. Oh! Oh, yes, yes! Indeed, there was. And she's dying to tell us. You shady lodger. Had you noticed anything else at all about your lodger, Miss Not Mr. Notsume, whoever's on Oh top? my word, yes, the man was shadier than an orchard. That's, actually, <laughs> that's really cute, I like that. Could you elaborate? Well, take the man's room. Absolutely stuffed full of books it is, more than anyone could ever read. Revelé, Chalser, Ballsack. <laughs> Little obscure you... music man reference for nobody. <laughs> And he never so much as passes the time of day with another living soul. I haven't seen a single visitor call. He just trots off to his old bookshelf every every day and comes back at four to light the gas fire. And the funny little man is up long past the time everyone else is in bed. Oh dear. Oh, I see. God, uh, fuck you. <laughs> the gentleman on the ground floor goes to bed around nine each night. But I've never known that Japanese fellow to retire any earlier than two in the morning. Ah. Uh. He's got jet lag, dude. 
For a year? I hope not. Could you clarify something, I wonder? What, pray? Uh, how do you know so much about Mr. Natsume's routine? I'm do you have a little crushy crush on him? I'm in love with him. I'd understood that the neither of the lodges live on this floor of the house, is that correct? Well, I guess they both below us. The first floor and street level. Oh, yeah, Is fucking it? British people and their first floor being the second floor of lunatics. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? Then how is it that you know so much about the lives of your lodgers? Do you spy on them? The precise times that they come back in the evening, for example, even the times that they go to bed? Just pull that yeah, right on your God dick. grief, June! Be more careful, woman! Oh my goodness, sir, I'm terribly sorry, sir! Barely got any cock left! <laughs> Something doesn't add up here. Oh. I'll need to see your cock. What's left of it, man? It seems what, that the incident What took remains of Edith cock? It seems that the <laughs> incident took place around at around five in the evening. Did you happen to look out the ring the rindo at around that time? Mm, the rindo? <laughs> yes, we noticed that the rindo over there looks out over Briar Road. The incident took place on the pavement just on the far side of the street. Was there anyone suspicious loitering nearby? I like this comment in chat. Bloody PP looks like a candlestick! Oh no! <laughs> Five o'clock is dinner time in the Garadep household. So I'm afraid I don't remember seeing anything. How about you, Joan? No, sir. It would have been dusk outside already at that hour. And with the fog as well, I should think it would have been quite impossible to see the other side of the road. Oh, I see. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary, then? <laughs> A smell, mayhap? Someone in chat, I wish Kazuma could spill tea on my cock again. <laughs> so I wonder what's going to be behind that partition there, because it looks like the ground is burnt to shit. <laughs> Anything at all, even if it seems unrelated? Mm, well, uh, yes, was there something? Where is it? Oh, fuck! For the love of God, Joan, watch what you're doing! <laughs> Oh, dearie me, what have I done? I'm awfully sorry, sir. Anyway, go back, back, and back to that line. Well, I think the idea is you're supposed to be completely cut off so we don't hear it. I, I think I think every time you're about to say something, she's stopping you. You will be more careful, woman. Also, for the record, I'm not skipping those lines. That is the natural speed yeah, yeah. at oh, which it, is, it cuts forward. Yeah, that's, that's just happening. Of course, sir. If I may, Mr. Naruhalo. Uh, oh, uh, yes. I have an exceedingly good memory, and as far as I remember, nothing of any insig nothing of any significance took place here at that hour. Nothing at all. Oh, really, Mr. Gerardum? The way you were talking before, it sounded rather like there might have been. Oh, I've learned my lesson. I'm not getting a fuck. <laughs> Joan, dash it all! What is the matter with you, woman? What is this fucking cartoon sort of dynamic here? Begging your pardon, sir. Nothing happened. <laughs> mm, yes, quite. Nothing happened. We sat down to a quiet, uneventful meal, mm, Joan. That's right, Mr. Caradab. What is the matter with these two? <laughs> It sounds like something happened here in this room on the evening of the incident, but what throws tea at his face? I wish I knew. Could you tell us which floor Mr. Natsume's room is on? Mm, I certainly. Just below us on the first floor. Which is the second floor for sensible people. Well, Ruki Shows is investigating there even as we speak. Let's just burrow through the floor. Yes, told me Nats' name and asked him to look into the matter, so I gave him the key. Mr. Natsume has engaged Mr. Shun's services. That's a blatant lie. Would it be all right if we also had a look around? In Mr. Natsume's room, I mean. Hmm, don't see why not. It's just down one flight of stairs. Who knows if we'll find anything that could help us with the case, but we have to try. 
We, we need all the clues nope. we can... Oh, we need all you. the clues we can lay our hands on. Shall we? Yes, and... <laughs> we can speak with Mr. Sholmes again. Perhaps he'll be able to tell us more. And I just assume I won't be able to look around in here while they're in here, but we'll look at this pleasuring device. Nope, nothing there. All right, goodbye. Nothing suspicious at all. It's weird. This is the first case in this game where we get to investigate and have a trial. Oh, oh my god, that's not some may. Jesus. Oh, did god. the uh, did the third case was the third case trial only? Also, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean the the entire scene of the crime was a carriage, which was a single investigatable piece of evidence. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was all in trial. What? Well, just look at this place and smell it. It's so musty in here. I suppose it's the mountains of no of old books that are responsible for that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen so many books in all my life. No, me neither. It's so dark in here too. God, the idea Where of like. Is he? Where is he? <laughs> is that the? Is that, is no. that the window over there? Well, it was the window, I think. Yes, once upon a time. But for some reason, it's been closed up with bricks and mortar. So this is where Mr. Natsume lives. By the way, I haven't spotted Mr. Shams anywhere, have you? Camera slowly pans up. He, he's on the ceiling and his head like 180s, like the baby he, from Train Spotting. He was, he was on the other side of the window and got cask of amontillado. Yeah! Hello! Ah, seem to be asphyxiating in here. <laughs> <laughs> shame. No, that's true. But according to what Mr. Gerardub told us, the great detective should be around here somewhere investigating. I see you found my ability to transform into a cat. It's me, Furlock Holmes. Ah. <laughs> oh, hell. Where are you going? Oh my, what an adorable little cat. Perhaps he's looking after all the books while his master is away. I don't know about that. He disappeared into that pile of books as quick as a flash. Secret entrance. It was, uh, it was a tricolor Mike? Mike. Mike. Mike, wasn't it? Do they even have that sort of cat here in Great Britain? Perhaps Mr. Natsume brought the little creature with him from Japan. Must made me feel homesick now. Already? We've only been in the country for two days. Yeah, but you were on like a month and a half long trip to get here. Good point. Oh, where Ooh. did he go? Hmm. <laughs> Hope that's failed manuscripts, am I right? <laughs> this appears to be some sort of meter on the wall here. Looks very robust. Wonder what it's for. There's a slot for inserting coins here too. Coins are used as currency. Oh. <laughs> I believe that is a gas meter, Mr. Nadahuda. A gas meter? Yes, it seems there's piped gas in this gas in this district, which consumers pay for by putting coins in the meter. So if we were to put a coin in the slot... That would be enough gas to use the lights and the gas fire for the whole night. So if you're too poor to have a coin, you'd have to spend the night in the dark and freezing cold. If you're too poor That's to have right. a coin, you don't have a lodging. As would a rich man who only carried crisp white notes. <sighs> London is a scary place. I immediately sympathize with that because I had to use a laundromat for the first time the other day and literally could not do it because I didn't have small enough bills and coins. <laughs> Look at all those books stacked up there. I almost reached the ceiling. They're all works of English literature, and they all smell so musty. With this volume of books to hand, you'd never be short of reading material, would you? There was time now. <laughs> time enough at last. No, what a dreamy idea. A bad dream, maybe. <laughs> For me, at least. Mind you, I don't imagine the book that's at the bottom of the pile now will ever be read again. Ah, oh, so reading it is an experience that comes but once in a lifetime, just as the tea ceremony teaches us. I certainly didn't expect the conversation to turn down to the path of sea ceremony, sea ceremony philosophy. <laughs> Hello! Would you even call this a window? I think 
so, it was a rinder one at one time after all. Although that remains, although all that remains is a frame around some bricks now. So it really is just a roll then. <laughs> Why would anyone deliberately brick it up like that? I'm afraid I've no idea. Ah! Perhaps Mr. Natsume painted the brick design on a... On, why would he do that? He would need to pay for that. Ugh, that's alarmingly feasible. Anyway, whatever the reason, the lack of ventilation in here makes the place very oppressive. It does. I imagine being cooped up in a room like this would be extremely trying. That desk seems to be weighed into a crevasse between the mountains of books on either side. Suppose Mr. Natsume would sit here and read while stroking his cat. <laughs> but surrounded on all sides by these towering old tomes, surely he dreamt of books every night as well. Yes, he must have done, mustn't he? Oh, what's this? A book! It's a recipient from a second-hand bookshop. Your books! Oh yes, Mr. Natsume's name is on it. Look, and the date of purchase, now two days ago at 4.45pm. That's the day of the incident! That's just a short while before he was embroiled in the terrible attack. He must have been on his way back from buying some old books. Second-hand book, recipient. All right, let's take a look at that then. Hey, Aram. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I, uh, I was just... Uh, <laughs> very yearning. <laughs> Where's your books? Meow. Oh, look, it's a beckoning cat from home. Don't fucking touch it. It's a bit big and bulky, isn't it? Surely Mr. Natsume didn't bring that Maneki Neko all the way from Japan with him. I hardly think you're in a position to comment, Mr. Narahodo. Are you forgetting the enormous Dharma doll that you brought in your luggage? Well, it can be dangerous travelling abroad. I wanted a lucky charm. Well, I imagine Mr. Natsume wanted the same, and this cat is sure to beckon good luck to him. It's not doing a very good job so far, is it? Because somebody touched it. You mustn't say such things! I didn't say a word! Oh, wait, I did. Sorry. Why are my eyes such a giveaway? He's just, like, extremely normal-looking boy, but every word he thinks visually flashes in his eyes. <laughs> Look at all those books! I guess it's the bag you didn't investigate? Yeah, I was trying the to... Blanket too. I was I was going for that one little thing. Wow, that bag is not investigable. What? There's more room to the side. I'm just being thorough. I assume Shomes will appear after we've... There he is. <laughs> you handsome ghost. Ah! Look, Mr. Naruto! You handsome goat. You goat. Aha, there he is. Where did he appear from? He seems to be engrossed in the pages of an old book. I hope he won't mind if we disturb him. Mr. Shomes! Kitty, 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 kitty. Hmm. Shasha, you two. Good day. Now, let me see. Where was it that we met? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, we were together on the SS Buria. Yes, of course, the Buria. And let me see. What happened on that voyage? It was Kazuma Arsagi. He died, tragically. But you were a great help to us. Ah, yes, but of course, the case of Mr. Asogi. I, it was the one with the snake, wasn't it? I oh. am a snake. Well, you seem to remember something of it, at least. What an honor to be remembered vaguely by the great Herlock Jones. This is Mr. No, 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 my dear madame, hold your tongue. I pride myself on my superior powers of recollection. Your names are safely recorded in my brain attic. Oh no. Hm. Miss Naruhodo and Mr. Susato. Try the other way around, Mr. Sholmes. I mean, honestly, it's not terrible. He did remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> I lose the first round. <laughs> Idiots. In truth, I had hoped to invite you both 
by Baker Street Suite the day we arrived in London. But some Scotland Yarders ambushed me at the railway station and whisked me away to a crime scene. It was an entirely trivial case, of course. I solved the matter in no more than 30 minutes. So they apprehended soseki san in that short of an <clears throat> amount of time? I'm afraid the pursuance of a new case has dulled my recollection of my past involvements a little. A little? It is a mistake to think that one's brain attic has elastic walls and can distend to any extent. I do my best to forget useless facts, lest they should elbow out the useful ones. Yes, those are my own words of inimitable wisdom, you know, from an adventure entitled A Study in Scarlet. Please, there's no need to quote yourself. I don't always remember my pearls of wisdom, but fortunately, my associate pens them beautifully. He means Iris, I suppose. Mr. Sholmes, we have some extremely important questions to ask you about the trivial case you just mentioned. Goodness! What an earnest expression! My dear madame, I should be only too pleased, and this murky room is an apt place to discuss the murky case. We know this to be the lodgings of a Japanese foreign student by the name of Soseki Natsume. It seems that you assisted in his arrest, Mr. Sholmes, for the stabbing of a young woman outside here on Briar Road. Natsume. Yes, I believe it was a name rather along those lines. But Mr. Natsume denies it. Was it really justifiable to arrest him on so little? Hmm. I'm sorry, Miss Susato, but I have not the slightest idea what you mean. What? I can't believe he was looking Susato-san squarely in the eye while feigning ignorance. I assure you, I'm not merely feigning ignorance. It would appear as if the pair of you are under some misapprehension. Oh? How? I assure you, I have no recollection of you of accusing your stupid compatriots. Excuse me. I mean, as in hunch, not... You know, <laughs> but of that doesn't crime. make any sense. He is stupid. The good detective of Scotland Yard made the following request of me, and I quote verbatim. We need you to ascertain the identity and whereabouts of a man seen fleeing the crime scene. Ah, uh, a man seen fleeing. There were a number of books scattered on the pavement at the scene. From the book plates, I was quickly able to determine the bookshop from which they had been purchased. On speaking with the proprietor, I was immediately led to this address. Elementary, wouldn't you say? I believe there is a receipt around here somewhere from the establishment in question. So you don't think Mr. Natsume is the culprit then? Hmm, that I could not tell you, but it was aggravating my faculty, hence why I returned here. However, this place is such a trove of fascinating books, I found myself quite lost in bibliophily. Do not be deceived into believing that I am a man of leisure. No, no, no. Oh dear. Ah, tell me, have you encountered the landlord of these lodgings? Yes, Mr. Geradep, a retired military man. It was the first time I've ever met a soldier from the Great British Institution, that is, the services. And it was the first time I've ever met a maid from the greatest British... British... God damn it. I met a maid from the Great British Institution, that is, service. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> I do apologize. As you may be well aware, many households in London employ a maid. They do! Yes! I read as much in my Great Britain primer! And so conversely, whether or not a household employs a maid has come to betoken the social standing of those dwelling therein. Betoken their social... sorry? Put uh, simply, my dear fellow, those who employ at least a single maid are considered middle class. Those who do not are beneath that. Oh, Britain, you and your class system. In the upper echelons of society, of course, households employ enough staff to constitute a large family. Goodness, how extraordinary! As you can appreciate, for those on the precarious boundary between the middle and lower classes, being able to afford just one maid is of the first importance. Myself, for instance, I have kidnapped a ten-year-old child and made her my maid. I... I had no idea. 
And it is for precisely that reason that I find great stimulation in the situation upstairs, specifically in the retired army veteran, Mr. John Garadeb. Oh. Awful as he is, the fellow is hiding something. Whether or not it imposes on the circumstances of this case, I am as yet unable to ascertain. I'm thoroughly lost on what he means to say. The dingy room. This room is thoroughly suffocating from the soul, my dear fellow. I assure you, any man whose lot is just to dwap a dwell in this place such as this will stab somebody sooner or later. Yes! No! Ah. But sooner or later, as I said... I don't believe that's the issue here. About this dark little room, Mr. Shams. <clears throat> Why is there no longer a window? Do you have any idea? No window? Well, I mean, I can clearly see that there is a window, of sorts. But it's been completely blocked with bricks. Ah, I see. The answer to that question is quite simple. Window tax. Window tax? What is that? Surely not a tax on windows. Precisely that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Until relatively recently, a tax was levied on households in this country by the number of their windows. Why? Those of lesser means, having inherited a sizable and costly family home, perhaps, rapidly closed windows up. What a goofy way of doing things. <laughs> While the rich opened windows here, there, and everywhere. Why? <laughs> in an effort to curry favor with oh, those in well, power by furnishing them with large sums of tax money. How awful and unjust! Forcing people to live in rooms devoid of light? Indeed. Dise disease was rife as a result. Disease? <laughs> As I, so some 40 years ago or thereabouts, the window tax was abolished. But its legacy remains, as you can see, Sorry. in squalid lodgings such as these, for example. Good catch. Um, I suppose Mr. Notsume's stipend for living here in London isn't very generous, perhaps. It would appear so. I've done a little digging. In the wall! Now there's a new window! and discovered that these lodgings were offered at an extraordinarily low price. Because the room is so awful, I should think. <laughs> Apparently Mr. Notsume only uh, moved here about one week ago. Yes, that's correct. However, I don't believe the low rent is explained by the shabby nature of the accommodation. Oh. Still, that is of little relevance here. A matter not worthy of further attention. Are you sure? I'm curious now. Ah, I see you've exhausted all my dialogue options. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, yes, Mr. Naruhodo. Are you seeing anyone? Was it not your intention to become a practitioner of law? You remembered that, did you? Will you perhaps be offering your services in this very matter, I wonder? To the occupant of this room, Mr. Natsume, was it? I'm not sure. Not sure? On what grounds? Well, I actually defended someone in court here only yesterday. Really? Well then, I congratulate you, sir, on an ambition realized. And so promptly, too. The thing is, it's really made me question things. Am I right to believe in my clients? To trust in their innocence? Hmm, yes. Trust. Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Natsume didn't do it, did he? <laughs> oh, my dear fellow, I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, but I thought that's why you were here. Didn't you come back to investigate? Ah, yes, that was indeed my initial intention. But there are simply too many fascinating books here. I couldn't possibly ignore them. Oh, I see. Nevertheless, there are two facts that I can state quite unequivocally. The man who fled the scene of the crime two days ago was the Japanese occupant of this room. And there are witnesses who swear to having seen the same man commit the crime. That is all I can say. Ah, and one more thing. Oh? Well, what is it, Mr. Shams? Tell us! Peekaboo. Oh! 
I cannot say with any certainty whether or not it is, of, it is of relevance to this case, but I am quite sure that the retired army man who owns this property is hiding something. Mr. Gerardup is. Mr. Sherm said as much before, actually, didn't he? Anyway, at present, that is really all that plays on my mind in relation to this case. Mr. Narahodo, as yet our investigations have uncovered nothing that would help establish Mr. Natsume's innocence. No, you're right. Perhaps it's time we probed a little deeper into Mr. Gerardup's secret. I feel like I should do something for Narahodo's blue text, considering it's apparently not mental. Just remember, I cannot be sure whether or not the landlord's secret will prove to be of relevance. But I wish you every success, of course, Mr. Naruhodo. I'm going to evaporate now. <laughs> Busy I'm man I'm going indeed. back behind the window. Busy man, indeed. He's gone back to his books in the corner of the room. Handsome. So, he's just so handsome. Excuse me. Yes, leave me be. Mr. Sholmes. Mm, yes, so true. To be or not to be. That is indeed the question. Mr. Naruhodo. To be or not to be brushed off. That is the question. And the answer is all too clear. Let's leave him alone. But he's pretty. I know. Oh, we I know. You don't need to tell Susato that. Mr. Holmes, if you don't mind, I I've actually written some stories inspired by you. Um. <laughs> uh, look at all these balls of paper on the floor. There are notes scrawled all over them, in English. It looks like the waste paper basket is so full they've just fallen out. I think Mr. Natsume must have been deeply immersed in his research, don't you? Or deeply averse to tidying up his mess. Hmm. I... I wouldn't like to speculate which is closer to the truth. These are oddly hard and pointy for Check some reason. Check the cookie tin. Cookie tin. Up on the shelf. I did. There's nothing oh. there. Um, There's just sewing equipment inside. Fuck! <laughs> I feel like I probably got everything here. Ooh. Yeah, seems like it. Did you check on the pillow I'm, itself? I'm guessing they yeah. enforced you getting everything by shoulder appearance yeah and you're now right. you can just go talk to goodnight moon yeah you're right ah you pair again what's in the uh, pocket tell me was the detective chap i forget his name still hard at work down there mr herlock shows ah uh, yes rings a vague bell all that detective business isn't really my thing i'm afraid well, Mr. Sholmes is in his element down there. Jolly good show. Another cup of tea, if you please, Joan. Delivered to the oh, cup and not the crotch. No, oh, fuck! Jesus Christ! For the umpteenth time, woman, will you watch what your belly well doing? I shall be serving dinner shortly, sir. Mm, uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, frightfully rude of me, but I am afraid I shall have to ask you to take your leave, if you'll be so kind. Oh, yes, of course. We are deeply grateful for all of your assistance. Not at all, not at all. Don't get much chance to talk with young foreigners like yourselves. It's been a pleasure. Best of luck and all that. Perhaps you could see yourselves out. According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Garadev is hiding something. And since no other avenues of investigation seem open to us at the moment, perhaps we should do some digging. See yourselves out? No, uh, that's the wrong corner. you um, all right. Okay. Look at that enormous screen. It must have been put up there deliberately, surely? Yes, it certainly seems like someone's trying to hide something from view. What could be behind it, I wonder? I'm going to have a very quick look. Just, just a little peek. Ahem! Ahem! Maybe let's not, Miss Suzato. I think the maid is going to head us off with a cup of tea. <coughs> oh my god, those are giant bullets. Yeah. Are, are those mortar shells? They're enormous. Oh, I hadn't noticed. What are they doing here? Those old things? A couple of little rounds I accidentally fired into the barracks for training, you know. Became a lot of 
Culliver Regiment folklore, that incident. You mean you deliberately hunted out the spent shells? Well, I wouldn't say deliberately exactly. <laughs> they happened to land square in the crotch of my superior officer. The beginning of a great crotch blasting tradition in our unit. But only scrap iron, after all. Usually just thrown away, I believe. They <laughs> called us the unit, spelled much like eunuch rather than the traditional spelling. Yo, what the fuck is with that? Oh my god, look at him. But look at, you look never at him. know when things might come in useful, do you? Look at his stupid ass. What are you pointing at, sir? <laughs> Over on the right side, at the window. Oh. Useful for what, exactly? Mm, yes, well... Uh, Joan here did manage to knock one of the belly things on my foot the other day while she was dusting. Oh no! Hadn't shed a tear since 1869 before then, you know? <laughs> Maybe reconsider throwing them away? <laughs> uh, what's he doing over there? Mr. Shones! Suzato looking respectfully. <laughs> ah, we meet again, my dear fellows. Good gracious, when did you sneak in here? Herlock Shones, sir, at your service. Whatever were you doing over by the window? I am given to watching the evening sky as the sun sets, madame. Yet sadly, cheerful as the room downstairs undoubtedly is, it lacks an aperture for such observation. So I took the liberty of borrowing a small corner of space by the window up here. <laughs> well, uh... Keeping an eye to one's windows at dusk is the prudent thing to do in London, I'm gathering. Ah, and one other thing, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, me? I thought perhaps you might be in need of a certain great detective's great mind. Wait, he's not talking about... Is he? I, I didn't expect to be going through that again so soon. <laughs> what? Do you mean Mr. Shelves? There is a mighty secret in this modest room. My eyes see even the most trivial of trifles. I take it you're prepared, Mr. Naruhodo? No! I think so. <laughs> there is just enough time for one of my greatly admired great deductions. Let us conclude the matter before dark. They just start making out. <laughs> oh my! Mr. Garadan, though it would seem you are a military man of gris cons <laughs> considerably distinguished service, your standing as a landlord is most certainly not what one might call first rate. Because he's a mm -hmm. landlord. <laughs> I'm afraid, sir, that it is all too clear to me. There are two conclusions I've been able to draw by careful observation of your living arrangements. I beg your pardon. The first is that even as we speak, you are concealing the presence of a ferocious beast in your care. <gasps> Sorry, yeah. And the second <laughs> is that as a result of the beast's violent rampage, you have lost something very dear to you. Uh, uh, uh. Mr. Naruhodo, look! The old man's broken out in a cold sweat. Unbelievably, it seems Mr. Holmes' conclusions are both spot on. How? How could you possibly... How could I possibly know, you mean to inquire? <laughs> the answer couldn't be simpler, sir. For in the dense jungle of logic and reasoning, I am the King of Beasts. <laughs> and I know only too well that wild beasts are not easily tamed. So, shall we... To begin, once again, Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular! Someone in chat, it's another snake! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, no. Not sure of the best. Certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see that a fearsome beast has been on the rampage of late within these four walls. Oh, not the beans. Thus, we are faced with the question, what form might this beast take? Ah, for a man with military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. I... 
Your furtive glance, Mr. Garadab, leads us directly to the answer. The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by that lion statue. Yes, though an army man, you appear unimposing at best. A fact that has fueled your admiration for the mighty lion, the king of beasts. What is this piffle, I ask you? In the end, your admiration became so great, in fact, that you had a living, breathing specimen shipped from India, which you tried to keep in this very house. Lions don't live in, in India, India, my guy. Yeah. Sorry, oh. from India. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, living with such a wild beast proved, proved more difficult than you'd imagined. The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. Well. Oh, no. Yes, as we look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could this angry creature have disappeared to, madame? M me I pray you don't, do not consider me unchivalrous, but it is plain to me with one glance in your direction. It is. Your dress pocket gives us a, hum a handsome clue as to the beast's current whereabouts, for protruding from it is a handbill advertising a circus show. A circus? Yes, oh. you sought to dispose of this terrifying lion, Mr. Garadeb, at Batty's Circus. A traveling show currently sojourning in a nearby park. I have observed the tents. Barnum and Batty's Circus. You sold the savage lion, sir, to the circus troop. And I most certainly did not. I believe I have made my point. Oh no, he's almost correct, sir. The fearsome beast which ran amok in this room was an Indian lion. <laughs> and a simple visit to the circus now will reveal the lion prancing jubilantly through a ring of fire. All right, so, um, no to all of that. Uh... Just, uh, there, there's something behind the statue of the lion, but that's about it. Now, Mr. Garadab, it is plainly clear that you still have deep feelings for this formidable beast. Aww. What is to say, you are a furry. <laughs> Huh? Indeed, Indeed, a creature from the foreign lands of India. <laughs> In that blithe pose, the distress this loss has caused you is veritably tangible. <sighs> your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel being revealed by that supporting arm. Amid fits of tears, you let your beloved beast go. <laughs> the strain of losing something so dear to you is clearly visible in your visage. Nonsense, man! I, I simply... But what we must now ask ourselves is the true cause of this pain. Wink! And we need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Bucket. Yes, it is this pile of bills that has given ri rise to the pain you suffer. Every envelope contains another demand for payment. Oh. oh. For cartloads of meat, potatoes, wheat, and tea. Indeed, feeding your beloved has had a devastating impact on the financial circumstances of your household. And so you had no choice but to let it go. Yes. <laughs> now, a final fit of rage. A ferocious beast carried out one last unimaginable attack. Unimaginable? The aftermath of which can be clearly seen by observing the carpet over there. Oh, it's a very candy. expensive yeah. woolen carpet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, dearie me. What could have caused such a destructive outburst? Could it have possibly oh. been Amelia Bedelia? No! <laughs> oh. This time, madame, I'm afraid it is you who has inadvertently revealed the truth to me. Your wandering eye has settled upon the answer very neatly indeed. Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we need only look at the Tower of Cakes. Oh. There is no creature more dangerous on this earth than a beast with an unsatiated appetite. Was it or was it not once said by a certain noblewoman, if they have no bread, let them eat cake? It was not said. <laughs> Food is at the heart of all tragedy, in fact. Whatever do you mean? 
Having tired of the taste of cake, the beast began to stalk its next prey. I'm sure I need not spell out the nature of this final act of destruction carried out by the beast. There is only one logical conclusion. I'm wrong. <laughs> Worked into a frenzy by hunger, the lion attacked and ate the carpet. The teeth marks on the carpet are a perfect match with those of a lion I once saw in India. <laughs> oh, I was like, why are you pronouncing it that way? I forgot his bit is that he doesn't say any country's name correctly. <laughs> Rusaye. Hmm. Man, it's been years, but Siv finally gets to reprise his role as carpet with teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this beastly puzzle. No. No. What is the matter with you, Joan? You're pouring scalding hot tea all over me. Scalding oh. hot? It's yelling quite a lot. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Curative. Oh, I'm afraid I didn't notice. Starts just punching him in the face. Oh, my goodness. Who could see <laughs> this coming? Oh, no. I'm wiping off. <laughs> my deductions can be startlingly sharp. It stands to reason that your cup runneth over. Indeed, my revelations can make people spill tears at times, too. Oh. <laughs> um, Mr. Jones. Sorry to butt in again, but could I make an observation? Why, certainly, Mr. Narahado. What is it, again? Well, your deductions just now. Do you really think a lion could have fit inside a room of this size? Indeed, it is the only explanation for the facts. Oh, okay. The terrifying truth all too often lies beyond the realms of common sense. But wouldn't it be an idea to consider what lies inside the realms of common sense as well? Oh, shit, sorry. But, um, if an uncaged lion had run amok in this very room, surely Mr. Garadiv and his maid would have been hurt, or worse. Ah, that's where you're stuck. No doubt the former military man held his own against the beast using that large cannon. I thought you said they, hold, they sold the lion to the circus. And what about the food? Meat and potatoes are one thing. But I don't believe I've ever heard of a lion that drinks tea. No, that uh, would be a why... dandelion. Why no. do you this Pato? It occurs to me with some regularity that irrespective of race and breeding, whenever anyone lands on great <laughs> British soil, they are infused with a highly appropriate taste for afternoon tea. That sounds like bullshit! <laughs> Well then, Mr. Narahodo, it's get his ass! That sounds like <laughs> bullshit! Bullshit, you say? Mm, very well, correction! Twas not a lion that disparaged your room so thusly, twas a bowl! <laughs> I had a feeling that this was coming. A slight massage! That's all Mr. Sholmes's deductions me. You can do it! <laughs> Excellent! I've been waiting for my trusty partner in deduction to step forward, Mr. Naruhodo. We don't even know yet whether or not this is going to help with Mr. Natsume's case. Still, uncovering the truth is always worthwhile, whatever the motivation. I think that's the theme of the game. At least that's what I want to believe. Let us start again, from the beginning, of Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular. Okay. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes! Can you, can you please get out of our house? It's good to have dinner! Not We're anymore! Starving. I'm afraid the only thing you'll be eating is just. Bro! <laughs> Hang on! I really didn't see the lion thing coming. No, but if you observe Mr. Garrett's reaction, it rather seems as though some beast did indeed run a mark here in this room. Yes, yeah, something with a very fierce nature. But it couldn't have been a lion transported from India. So, what was it then? We must follow Mr. Garrett's gaze. That will lead us to the true answer. Was it his daughter? 
Oh. oh, what in what in God's name? Oh. oh, oh. What's this photograph? It appears to be from Mr. Caradib's wedding. Oh, is that the maid or the woman who got yeah, it's stabbed? Yes, the maid. He had to employ his wife as a maid. Quite normal for this very... day and era. <laughs> uh, he looks very happy, doesn't he? He does, but you can't make out his bride. No, how unfortunate. Something must have struck the glass directly below, uh, directly over the woman's face. I wonder what happened. Probably best not to delve too deeply there. No, no, we have to figure it out. All right, fine. Let's see what else is. Can I move around? Not really. All right. Take that! Take that! Behind the lion statue on the mantelpiece, almost deliberately hidden from view, is a photograph. Though I have yet to examine it in detail, what? I can assure you that it holds the answer. Because I'm an employing... Oh, alright. I guess I needed to continue investigating it. Because I'm employing an extremely advanced detection technique called jumping to conclusions, you see. <laughs> that deduction was wanting in every way. Yes, I was wanting you to hear it. I'm quite proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself wanting never to have heard it. I'm quite pained by it, in fact. Oh, sorry, I'll try again. Oh, lame. If, All right. you get to, if you lose your last thing, Holmes shoots you. <laughs> you just die. <laughs> All right, that's, that's a little bullshit, you guys. Oh, is it her ring? Oh, right. And the reason I was like, I'll back out is because uh, in this screen, unlike the previous one, it's disabled my ability to use my mouse to move around its keyboard. I mm. literally the only problem I've had with this game is its actual interactivity and in UI UX is remarkably awkward. Okay. Do, 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 do. I don't think there's anything else to investigate. Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. Alright. <coughs> he threw her. <laughs> Well, maybe... I can't now, present while they looking you... at the frame, right? I'm not sure. <clears throat> it probably... Oh, yes. Yeah, they... you can. Cool, completely different. This has... This is a very different thing from what I just presented. <laughs> The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by that newlywed bride. Precisely, Mr. Naruhoto. No other explanation could possibly fit. <laughs> by the way, I'm going to kick you in the balls for being so utterly wrong before. Yes, this framed print pictures your wife, Mr. Gerudeb. And while we lament the fact that her face is obscured, we can still make out her mighty arms, and note <laughs> her mighty arms, like tree trunks they are, and note the considerable horsepower they must contain. Fingers that can wrap <laughs> around a tree. <laughs> she had weird long rock climbers fingers, the kind of fingers one could wrap around a fridge. Mm. Oh, um... Indeed, surely any woman of such powerful constitution would be honored to be described as a beast. Have you ever met a woman before, Mr. Jones? Um, honored might be stretching a point. Do it! The fact <laughs> remains that the beast, which so clearly savaged this room, was your wife, Mr. Garadeb. Yeah! <laughs> oh, is it's it just a slap mark? It's not a yeah. burn, it's just a slap mark. Yeah. The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. I think oh. this is back to stuff we've already seen. I oh. actually, I think it is. Maybe. Uh, yeah, no, this is new. I 
think. Am I stupid? No, no, I no, so. you're no, right. Not. It is. Uh... Oh, yeah, sorry. <gasps> well, I don't know about fragile. Oh, dear. Anyway, Mr. Sholmes is quite right. There's no sign of Miss Garadab anywhere. But it seems there may be a clue as to her whereabouts. A clue that this maid is trying to hide. I wonder where Mr. Garadab's wife could be. Oh, wow, 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 what's this? What? Can bit, I look at a bit, ring? There cheerio. it is. Oh, holy fuck. It's wearing a very large ring, look. Oh, yes, sunflower design with some rather nice embellishments. And it's on the ring finger of her left hand, which means, oh, it's surely a wedding ring. Looks like it's on there for life, too. I can't imagine it would slide off a finger of that size, guys. Hey, what the fuck? That's Those... something to think, Mr. <laughs> Naruhodo, not to say. Do you know Mr. Caradip's wife in the photograph had a ring very much like this one? It was a large sunflower design as well. Really? You have a great memory for these things. Naruhodo means goldfish in Japanese. <laughs> huh? A large sunflower wedding ring. It's quite a coincidence they have the same ring in it. <laughs> Blind me! <laughs> Take that! I'm afraid you needed to zoom into the ring before binding to it, old boy. <laughs> Your wedding ring gives us a handsome clue as to the beast's current whereabouts. Please stop calling it a beast, you guys. Oh. Indeed it does. That flowery band gleaming on your finger gives you away. You ate his wife. For it is identical no, to the one Mr. shown on the, hand, <laughs> on the hand of Mr. Garadeb's bride in this photographic print. Only someone as thick and Rubenesque as yourself could have eaten her. You guys... Oh, thank you know too much, Alf. What? <laughs> it just sucks them up like Kirby. <laughs> in other words, you are no ordinary housemaid. Oh. No. You are Mr. Garadeb's lucky bride. You are Mrs. Garadeb herself. Someone in chat, I call this case straight people derogatory for a reason. <laughs> oh my word! Well, <clears throat> jolly fine detecting, sir. Except for all of that shit about smiles. the lion. This is frankly insane. <laughs> As you rightly surmised, this is the wife, yes. My Joan. Rather like ah! Oh fuck! You bastard! It would appear that you don't live in the most comfortable of circumstances. After all, you are a retired army man, yet you are in the business of renting out rooms. Tch. I would assume, therefore, you have insufficient means to employ a maid. Would that be correct? It's not right, I tell you! I was second lieutenant of the third regiment. The man has his pride, don't you know? Oh, my golly, it's a sorry thing when a chap can't even afford to have a single maid in his employer. Yes, here in London, one is rather judged. A household cannot be considered worthy of society if it employs no staff at all. Though, in my considered opinion, such concerns about appearances are a folly. You... you mean Mr. Kerridge has his wife work as his maid. Precisely. Am I right, Mr. Garadab? <sighs> Only in company, obviously. But listen here, this must remain a secret. A tip-top secret, please! <laughs> Dang. A raging boner of Mr. Garrett. I don't think Mr. Garadab's have a raging bone. Not anymore, no. <laughs> I think this is a this is a repeat. I saw fit to put that beast to sleep forever. Cut his dick clean off, I did. Slowly with tea. <sighs> Mr. Shoes is on him. quite something. He's still calling Mr. Garadab's wife a beast. Yes, as a woman, that feels rather uncomfortable. Save this real quick. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 
do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do do in other words, he hasn't lost his beloved at all, has he? Not physically, but clearly he's lost her love. Oh, how true. So perhaps that supporting arm that seems to be propping up his head has some other significance then. According to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Garadab's pain is tangible, though. What could- he's got a slap mark because he's a fucking asshole. I was about to just present oh, it. Oh, she but... got him good. Oh my, look at that bright red mark. That bright oh, that's red quite mole. something. It's clearly made by somebody's hand. Yes, Mr. Garadov has been slapped on the face, it seems. Hard. I've never seen such a clearly defined mark. You know what would be really funny? If they did the exact reverse and someone had, like, a big red you know, punch mark or handprint and the characters spent 20 minutes talking about it. Like, you can see in this photograph, the hand-shaped sniper rifle sight was on him. And <laughs> Funny is not the word I would choose. <laughs> Whoever could have done such a thing? Well, it's a very limited number of candidates, I'd say. Oh, no. Okay. Al, come here, buddy. Whoop. Take that! Take that! That's what I said to him. <laughs> your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel being revealed by that slapped cheek. <laughs> and of course, the deliverer of that impressive mark on your cheek that refuses to fade was you, Madame Joan Garadab. Oh, her eyes. Well, yes. You have been desperate to hide the slap mark on your cheek, sir. <laughs> 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 How the oh, pieces? Sorry. How did you work that out, man? Nothing escapes the notice of one trained in the art of observation, my dear fellow. That's why you haven't looked directly at us even once. To keep your other side from view. <laughs> now, let us proceed to the next conundrum. Meanwhile, in jail. Oh! I hope my, uh, I don't remember what his voice was. I hope my only hope of getting a not guilty verdict isn't wasting his time just randomly interrogating an irrelevant couple with a marriage dispute. Yeah, why? Why I... were you subjected to such a violent slap? In other words, we must ask ourselves, well, I don't, uh, well, whoop, whoop. It's, it's basically the same, isn't it? It's just going to be the same well, shit until this. Okay. Didn't Mr. Sherman say that the bills were all for lion fodder? Yes, but we've now established that the lion never existed, which can only mean that the thing responsible for gobbling up all that food was Mr. Garadab's wife. Mr. Narodo, <laughs> she's a person, not a thing. Yes, well, <laughs> she's also a person who gave her husband a mighty slap round the face. Yeah, but he kind of deserves it. One so hard that it left a perfect hand mark, in fact. Yes, why would a woman want to hit her husband with such force, I wonder? I'd love to know the answer to that question. Oh! Ah, uh, someone must be reading this book at the moment. There's a bookmark here, look. Mr. Gerdeb is clearly an avid reader. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. I don't think this is a bookmark. Oh no, so it isn't. It's a note written in a woman's hand. Oh, James, I love you. Yours, Mary. And look next to the signature here. Lip marks made with lipstick. Oh, oh the, the text is getting kind of scrumply for me. Oh, what a passionate and romantic gesture. Don't get, get any ideas, Susato. Don't get any ideas, Susato san. Oh dear, I'm sorry. So this bookmark is actually a love note, then. Hmm. Take that! Yep, 
Yes, it's this, uh, it is this love note that has given rise to the pain you suffer. James, I love you. Yours, Mary. Mm. Passionate indeed. Perhaps the sender of this note, a certain what? Mary, is the fly in the ointment here. One sec, I'm going to restart screen share. Yeah! But I don't know the belly woman! You don't know her? That note wasn't written to me! It was just in the book! I don't know how it got there! It was... It was just in there, you say? That's right! That's what I've been saying! <laughs> A likely story. The only dick Mary will be getting is a third degree burn dick. <laughs> like a bacon <laughs> stick it will be. <laughs> oh, Jesus now, Christ. Now listen here, Joan, old thing. I, I explained at the time. I bought the book at that second hand place. And that note must have already been in there. So, the previous owner of the book was using the note as a bookmark, you mean? That's right, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> you know what, it actually, it actually doesn't hurt anymore. I've oh, lost it least... all. Oh. For heaven's sake, woman, look at the name. It's written to James. My name, in case you've forgotten, is John! <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely story. Are, are you questioning my name now? Ooh! And there we have it. Arouse the suspicions of the female heart. To unleash a beast with a most ferocious bite. <laughs> now, in a final fit of rage, the ferocious beast carried out this as a repeat. Unimaginable. It's the candlestick. Oh, is it a birthday candle on that little cake there? No, it's this missing candle on the candelabra. Oh, okay, I didn't see that one. There's like a googly eye or something in the middle of that tart. You see? Yeah, that? I see what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it's a fig. Sorry, the, the screen share is getting real pixely for me now, so I can't really read the top text very well. Oops. This looks like a. This very... looks like a very old candlestick, doesn't it? The base looks too small. Surely it's very unstable. Looks to me like even the slightest knock would make it topple over. Oh, shit, oh sorry. dear, that would be terrible. Wait, take a closer look at this. There's candles. <laughs> There's one candle missing. Uh, yes, I didn't notice that before. Why is that, I wonder? Suzato should notice things more often. Why is one candle of the three missing from its holder? Who can say? Who oh, I just don't can know. say where the road goes? The carpet here has been ripped to shreds. Yes, and according to Mr. Sholmes' deduction, it the, the tears match those made by an Indian lion's teeth exactly. I'm ignoring you. Oh, look here. What is it? Oh, what is it? If you look closely at the edge, you can see scorch marks. Oh, yes, so you can. <laughs> In that case, perhaps the carpet wasn't eaten in the normal sense at all. Let's rethink this with that in mind. Okay, Suzato. Um, hmm. all right, I guess I'm what? just supposed to present Oh, wait, 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 zoom, zoom around. Keep zooming. That's as what far is as it that goes. thing? Okay, what is that small black thing on the, uh, far left there of the table? The cake? You mean the cake? Is there just, like, a little... Is that just a chunk of cake? I can't... It's just, yeah. It's just chocolate. Okay. okay. I think it's just this. Take that! Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we need only look at the candlestick. Most illuminating, my dear fellow. And of course, the only possible way out of this logical labyrinth. Yes, the remnants of a ferocious attack in which the carpet was devoured are clearly visible. Indeed the- oh no. Indeed they are. The scorch marks at the edge clearly give the truth away. Scorch marks? It would appear that this room was the scene of a little marital altercation. Oh! <laughs> oh, that is me. Mr. Garadib's mighty arm muscles left an impression not only on her husband's face, but on the entire... Nope. But on the entire room. The force of her strike caused a candle to fall from the holder. And in seconds, the carpet was alight and the whole corner of the room in flames. 
Yes. Uh, uh, so, how about you showing yourselves to the door? For the most ferocious beast in this world is neither a violent lion nor a vengeful woman, but fire. And in this room, that ferocious beast bared its claws and ran amuck. Eloquently put, my dear fellow. So you see, there is but one conclusion here. A lion was in the room. No, no. <laughs> After the sparks of... Spark. That's both of us. Marital discord flew. This oh, room flew. was the, this scene, room was of the scene of a fire. Okay. No. Uh, you have to die. Mr. Soames, sir, I salute you! <laughs> Guys. nights, you know. Nothing to do but read in front of the fire. Luckily, there's a jolly good second-hand bookshop just around the corner. Buy all my old novels there. And in the pages of one particular novel, you discovered some rather illicit material. For which your wife admonished you harshly, it seems. Uh, don't know about admonished. Demolished might be rather closer to the mark. And beast is most... <laughs> Here we go again. And the carpet! Was that destroyed by fire when a candle fell on the floor? I'm afraid to say it was. Happened in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke. Could see a bally thing. I was caught between the old sticks rage and the raging flames. You paint a torrid picture, sir. One that would have been most entertaining. He sets the carpet on fire again. Have at it. That's sympathy for you. <laughs> Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The bally furniture started going up as well. I've had to hide the mess behind that screen for the time being. Over here, Mr. Garrity? Well, you have nothing more to hide now, if you'll allow me. Not sure we needed that, even though I do enjoy those. Had all my favorite old novels in that case. But as soon as the fire got hold of them, that was it. Whoosh! Up in smoke! Gosh! Then the wife started hurling things at me. Was the window open? Did you throw a knife out Damn. the window? Oh my god! Oh my god! What a terrible sight it must have been. There was I, back up against the window, and a heavy enemy fire! Incendiary books coming ten to the dozen! Worst of it is, I lost my favorite book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride? Ah, yes, I think I saw that one from Disney. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I assure you, the title didn't influence my choice in the slightest. So the poor man really did lose something dear to him as a result of the ferocious beast's rampage. Mr. Shans's deductions turned out to be correct once again. Did they, Sus Otto? It yes! can only be described as a great British wonder. I tell you, it was total carnage. Flames everywhere and the old stick in full fettle. That's what I call my phallus. Out of interest, what time of day was that? Mm, not sure I can remember. It was two days ago now, let's see. Around five o'clock, I think. So, at exactly the same time as a terrifying incident was unfolding outside your window on the street below. Even more terrifying on the inside, I can assure you. Oh, Blighty could have been flattened outside my window at that moment. And I wouldn't have noticed a dashed thing. Oh, really? Mm. I killed a oh. man. Um, Mr. Sholmes. Yes, Mr. Naruhodo, what can I do for you? Kiss me. Well, I think we've got to the bottom of Mr. Garadab's situation now, but what does it have to do with Mr. Natsume's circumstances? Nothing! Can't help you there, I'm afraid. 
Well, my dear fellow, if you recall, I did say as much from the outset. I warned you that although I knew the retired army man to be hiding something, I could not be sure whether or not his secret would prove to be of relevance. I, I just knew you were going to say that. <laughs> no. Oh, now, now, Mr. Naruhodo. You mustn't lose heart. Bear in mind that all things fall into one of only two categories. Those relevant to the case and those not. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> well, no matter. It is of far greater importance that you make up your mind now. Sorry? Visiting hours at the prison will soon be over. Oh no, is it that time already? Should I waste time? If we're to accept Mr. Natsume's case, we have official paperwork to attend to. So that's it. No more time to think. Perhaps you'd like to betake yourselves to bidding us farewell now. Get the fuck out of my house. I must prepare supper for Mr. Gerardab. Uh, oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Thank you bo both very much for your time. So Seki-san will be waiting for us. I'm going to have to give him an answer. Get out, please! Fucking hell! Oh, I thought I clicked prison. Okay, yeah. It's time, Mr. Narahodo. We must hurry back to the prison. Yes, I know. Let's hail a carrot. Oh. What's the matter? Looks like something's going on over there in front of the Garadab's house. Huh? Oh! What the fuck? I I um, I need to see what the other one looks like before. <laughs> I knew he not, old man. Fall to thy prayers. Oh my god! Look at this nutcracker! <laughs> look at him and he He seen me curious, George. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take fucking berries and cream. I don't care who takes this guy. <laughs> I don't want him. <laughs> Will. <laughs> sure. Who are you calling an old man, you rum looking nimini pimini? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than I'll dreamt of in your philosophy. Who's this Horatio fellow, eh? What are you on about? Oh my God. Excuse me? Hey, what the? Who are you now? Uh, I'm sorry, it just looked as though there might be some problem here. And my associate here, Mr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, is a lawyer, you see. Eh? Uh, a lawyer? What? If I can be of any assistance, I'd be happy to help. I'm from Japan, but I have studied English law. <laughs> Fine. I'll be on my way for today, but you mock my words. This ain't over yet, Dabs. Get the no, issue of nunnery! <laughs> Do I look like a blooming nun to you? <gasps> what the Jesus? I do hope you're not injured. Oh, fair Eastern maiden, thou art so gentle. Thank you. What was that all about? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Uh, I'm not Horatio either. Uh, forgive the inquiry, sir, but, uh, are you a lodger oh. here in the Garadim Crescent? Uh, it's okay. Oh, fair Eastern Maiden, thou art so right. Yes, I do dwell in this humble abode. Mr. Garadim mentioned he had another lodger, didn't he? This must be the man. <gasps> <laughs> do you happen to know the other lodger who lives on the first floor? Ah, yes, a gentleman named Natsume. Oh, more worthy a polemist in my... I don't know this one. A polemist in my battle of words. Ne'er could there be... S sorry Battle, did you say? Who is the stronger? Hamlet or Macbeth? Mr. Notsume and I sparred long into the night. I see. Chad, is this guy ever going to interact with Natsume? Because if so, I can't have him. I... I don't fully understand. But it seems Mr. Natsume and this gentleman are acquaintances, at least. 
Yes, okay. We'll see. So, fair maiden, so, good gentleman, I can tarry here no longer. Fare thee well! What the fuck? Ah, uh, he went home. It seems he's unaware of what happened to Mr. Natsume, so he can't really help us. With Soseki-san and that man as lodgers, the Gerardup house is certainly full of eccentrics. Anyway, I'll go and find a carriage. Yes, I'm sure Mr. Natsume is eagerly awaiting our return. Let's hope we can get to the prison before visiting hours are over. Fucking Van Zeex is gonna be there like, big on. <laughs> oh, it's you! You're here, you came! Locum student Mr. Not Order Esquire! I can't believe you came back! I'm so touched! I just heard the news! Mario Chris Pratt! Unbelievable! <laughs> we are so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Natsume. Oh no, nothing, nothing of it! <laughs> Relax! If I were a cat, I would purr with pleasure at the company of such fine compatriots! No nurturing, never failing anybody's! <laughs> oh, now let's not get carried away. This is you, for sure. I think. Evil vampire. There is nothing more reassuring than the familiarity of one's native land. On the other hand... Nope. Oh, no. <laughs> Did you like my impression? How do you like my impression of the Greek? Really? <laughs> Fuck, I didn't think he was going to be back so soon when I was making a sound. <laughs> It is through friendship transcending international borders that one truly appreciates the fact. Such is my belief, at least. Uh, oh, it's... Yes! Uh, it, uh, it's uh, you! Again. What? No, never mind. The miserable, rotten spy, Herlock Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes, what are you doing here? <laughs> I have no intention of doing anything, per se, save observing, of course. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Shones? Well, having encountered some rather... He's hyperventilating. ...curious <laughs> reading material in that gloomful room full, <laughs> and having unmasked the secret identity of that eccentric pair, I decided I should drop in on my way home to see how our divested friend is faring. Poorly! Oh, gloomful room? At least your accommodation here offers a window, my dear fellow. In that sense, it is the superior option. Anyway, I must commend you on your taste in books. My day has been a delight and cost me not a penny. Don't you? How dare you, Herlock Jones? Your mic is eating most of that. That's whatever. <laughs> I found it. I'm through. I'm at the end of my rope. I should never have come to Great Britain. It was a terrible mistake. Haunted by spirits in those accursed lodgings. No doubt my luck will be cursed in tomorrow's trial as well. My whole life has been damned! What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhodo? I got myself a baby bumblebee. bumblebee. <laughs> he mentioned that once before, didn't he? That his lodgings were cursed, I mean. And there is much truth in Mr. Mustache's words. What? Hang cursed, on. Do you want to... Cursed is a wholly appropriate description, I would say, for the man's lodgings, and indeed for tomorrow's trial. What's that supposed to mean? I stabbed a witch! I mean, no, I didn't! <laughs> Mr. Natsume, what did you mean by what you said just now, about the trial tomorrow being cursed. Oh no, why, why are you looking so grave? You're making me nervous. I was just getting carried away, that's all. I, I didn't mean anything by it. Oh, I see. That's really agitated him. <laughs> you don't mean the trial really is cursed somehow? Yes. <laughs> are you referring to the prosecutor, the Reaper of the Bailey? <laughs> the Reaper? Oh no, what do you mean? Please, tell me! Summarize it succinctly in 16 salient words! No defendant has ever survived in a tr uh, 
What? Fuck, hang on. No defendant has ever survived in a trial in which the Reaper stands for the prosecution, ever. I actually think that is 16, yeah. Oh my goodness, can it really be true? That was 16 words exactly! <laughs> Yesterday, Mr. Narahoda successfully defended someone against the Reaper. But then, after the trial was over, the defendant passed away in unusual circumstances. Mr. McGill did. <laughs> what? Ah, I'm impressed, Miss Susato. You have an eye for detail. Actually, the Lord Chief, Chief Justice told us. Mr. Sholmes, surely it can't be that having failed... What? Surely it can't be that having failed to have the accused convicted, Lord Van Zeeks killed the man himself. Oh no, he couldn't have, surely. <laughs> oh, you have some wonderful notions. Sorry. Man isn't a mass murderer. He's a court prosecutor, my dear fellow. No prosecutor in this series has ever committed murder. Yes! Oof, correct. my shoulder hurts. Oof. Why, of course he is. D of course he is! Then why are you trying to scare me? It could be said, however. I love this guy's movements. <laughs> that the real truth about the man is even more terrifying than your hypothesis. What on earth do you mean by that? Creepy PB lemon creep. Well, it's been rumored that he kills people. <laughs> hmm. Van Zeeks is quite an exceptional man. However, in London courts of law, exceptional does not equate to winning every case without exception. Ah, uh, that, that's good. So Seki-san looks like he's going to cry tears of joy. As you are no doubt aware, in a British criminal trial, there is both a judge and a jury. The judge officiates based on the letter of the law, whilst the jury offers public opinion and common sense. It is an excellent system, which we'll abandon save for one case in Apollo Justice, whereby the defendant's guilt is considered from several points of view. However, public opinion in particular is somewhat easily manipulated. Someone in chat, he's also a big fat racist. <laughs> Right. Criminals and corrupt lawyers, for that matter, can use it to their advantage, by any means at their disposal, contriving evidence, calling imposters as witnesses, and so on. By such underhand means, those who would want to are able to sway the jury, which means that even in the light of irrefutable evidence, the prosecution can fail. But it means the wrong verdict can be passed. Sadly, is from time to time, my dear madame. It is simply the reality of the situation. And that's all right. However, those indicted by Lord Van Zeeks cannot escape justice. Their fate is sealed. Uh, oh my. Though the adjudication may see them leave the courtroom with their freedom, within months they all disappear. It is most striking. Disappear? But, but how? Ah, by all manner of misfortune, sir. Perhaps they are trampled under a passing carriage. Perhaps they fall into the Thames and drown. Perhaps they are suddenly overcome by a raging fever, or perhaps attacked by highwaymen. Oh, no, 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 no. All examples of the reality of events here in London, I'm afraid, Mr. Naruhodo. <sighs> I knew it. I'm... A dead dodo done for! Doomed! Were dodos extinct by this point? When uh, you... Probably just about. When you said accursed lodgings before, you were referring to your room at Mr. Garadab's house, I assume. Do you mean to say you believe the place is cursed? It's been a year now since I came to Great Britain, but I'd only been in London a week before I started to notice strange feelings in myself. That didn't of course take it's long. cursed. It's been a year since I came to London. I haven't gotten laid once. <laughs> I can't imagine why! Everywhere I looked, there were foreign faces staring at me, laughing behind my back. I was sure people were talking about me. I started to become nervous about going outside. They were always staring at me all the time from dawn till dusk. So I shut myself away in my room. But even that didn't help. The fear wouldn't go away. 
Today on music. <laughs> you must have been very lonely having been away from your homeland for such a long time. I had, I've had to move a number of times, most recently to that room on Briar Road a week ago now. Yes, why did you choose there? It seems a little inconvenient. The rent is cheap. I had so little money it appealed to me straight away. Of course I asked why it was so affordable. The landlord just simpered and said, the room is cursed. Oops! He quickly tried to cover his mistake, but it was too late. So I told him, if you have something to say, then say it. But if not, don't mention it in the first place. Yes, well said. But it was true. It was all true. You mean, the room really is cursed then? Ever since I moved into that windowless hellhole, my sleep has been plagued with nightmares because there's a gas leak. I awake yeah. feeling as though I'm being choked to death. It's because there's a gas leak. And in my waking Did hours... Did you know Lord Van Zeeks might look like a handsome young vampire, but he's actually 85? <laughs> and in my waking hours, people are stabbed in front of me as I walk down the street. I'm branded a killer. Thrown in prison. Nobody wants to know me. I'm... I'm surrounded by scary, sinister spirits. If only there was someone, just one person on my side. Can no like one find? Can no one find? I have a cat. Can no one find it in his or her heart to believe in me? Really, no one at all. To believe, yes. To believe. Goodbye. <laughs> um, Mr. Sholmes. Yes! Ah, oh, me, Mr. Narahodo. Pray, what can I do for you? Mouth from goldfish. <laughs> it's about the case on the SS Burya, if you recall. The Burya, the Burya. Ah, that case! The one with the snake! Well, yes. At that time, I was the suspect, but you believed in me and listened to my side of the story, and you helped us to investigate. I did, did I? <laughs> Interesting. What I want to know is, why? Why did you believe in me? I see, yes. You mean... because you were a grimly dressed, shady Eastern fellow found with the victim in a locked room? Um, uh, well, if you like, yes. I'm a little surprised that the answer requires explanation, my dear fellow. It's quite simple, really. You said I didn't do it. But I could have been lying. Surely you must have had your doubts. You must have suspected me a little. Hmm, I think perhaps you've misunderstood. I neither recall believing in you nor in that which you were telling me. What? You see, the only thing I believe in are those I choose to believe in. What... what do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? I make up my own mind about what is to be believed and what is not. Simply, it's gravity's rainbow. I simply follow the trajectory and the truth lands at my feet. It is the hole in this donut. If I should like to believe something, I do. The circumstances can hang as far as I'm concerned. But... Covid doesn't exist. But I could... <laughs> Wait, hang on, no. <laughs> But I could have betrayed your trust. <laughs> oh, in that case, I should have made an elementary error of judgment. Nothing more. Betrayal of trust is an overused excuse, in my opinion. Meaning... Whether or not one should trust another is, in the final analysis, down to oneself. It is a matter of whether or not one can trust oneself. Yes, yes, he's right! He's right, locum student Mr. Narodo Esquire! I didn't read that. Whether I trusted myself or not. A defense lawyer is only as good as his faith in his client. And that comes down to how much faith he has in himself. Go get him, buddy. You were so right, Kazuma. I won't take the case. Goodbye. <laughs> it sounds hard. <laughs> well, my dear fellows, it is time we were leaving, I believe. Already? Already? Visiting hours are over. The business hours are over. It's the business. Business. 
It's business time. Time. <laughs> there is a restaurant near here that serves excellent trout and poisoned water. Would okay. you care to join me? Beautiful Carraro. Mm. I would love to join you. Let's go. Oh, dear. Oh. There is never enough time, is there? I'm back. What have I missed? Um, Mr. Notsume, if you'd like, in the trial tomorrow, I'd be happy to represent you. As I said, I only experienced a British courtroom for the first time yesterday, and although the man I was representing was found not guilty, I lost sight of something crucial. Something crucial? What to believe in? <laughs> the defendant, justice, or the truth? How to believe, even. But I think I finally worked it out. I've decided I must believe in myself above all else, to trust my instincts. Yes, okay. Mr. Narahodo. I saw an S and I thought it was so sucky. And my instincts are telling me that you, Mr. Natsume, are innocent of this crime. And it's imperative that we prove that in court. I will, I will fight for your innocence until the bitter end with every weapon available to me. And I own a katana. Katana! So I, so I hope you'll permit me to katana na. Do, 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 do. So I hope you'll permit me to represent you tomorrow. As I said when we first met, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who will li uh, who will listen to me in my native tongue. Of course, Mr. Natsume. Oh, fuck, are you kidding? I, was, I have nothing in my mouth for fucking ever, and I'm just fucking shit happening. Do you be fair to say, Mr. Naruto? <laughs> or for mine was, in many ways, made up from the outset. You're trying to eat through the bars there, Mr. Sholmes. I will free your friend. You merely needed the events of today to fully realize it. Yes, I think you're right about that. Those two. It's been a roundabout journey, but I got there in the end. Ow, my dick! That's really <laughs> what did it for me. Miss Suzato. Ah? Would you be willing to stand by my side tomorrow and help me in court? I'm not sure what this oh, crisis- no, I'm going to see Big Ben. You'll have to ask somebody else. <laughs> Absolutely. Big Ben is the name of my date. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck, I'm eating. <laughs> you guys, you can't bite him out of the jail. <laughs> Watch us! As I said this morning, you may consider me your personal judicial assistant. The shocking events of yesterday's trial still weigh heavily on my mind, but it's time to stop looking backwards. Cosima believed in me, and Mr. Sholmes believes in me now too, so it's time. Time that I learned to believe in myself. Soseki san has no one. He's all alone. So it's my job to help him, to fight in his corner. Tomorrow, in the courtroom, with all the strength I can muster. That's a good stopping point. Yeah. Probably kind of like the, um, this take on, like, belief, etc. For being a little more nuanced of Shalmas being, like, you know, believe whatever you want to believe. You know, use your best judgment. And people get too butthurt about feeling like their trust was betrayed when really it meant they they didn't use that trust wisely in the first place. Like they should just they should learn from that experience instead of get, being bitter at the person who wasn't the person they thought they were. Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. I I'm afraid so many people tend to get butthurt, old boy. <laughs> Offenses taken, not given. <laughs> like blowjobs. <laughs> Every time you see Sholmes crouching weirdly in the corner, he's just maintaining himself at blowjob height. Guys! Let's raid Scott Falco. Oh, invalid username. Let's try again. Raid Scott underscore Falco. Fancy. Go get him! Chuck it in me, Gobber. I'll give you a bluey. Hmm. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Toodles. Hmm. Toodle -oodle -oodle -oodle. Oh, he's playing Hitman. Stop streaming. <laughs>